you can uh, have a go at Rescue Dawn, so the, the tr- aforementioned Werner Herzog film. As you have said, the true story of Dieter Dingler, who, who, he, he already covered this to some extent in, well, to not some extent, he already covered it fairly fully in his documentary Little Dieter Needs to Fly. In case you don't know the story already, I'm sure you do because of the huge posters. The story is he was a German-born uh, US Navy pilot who flew uh, over Laos in the 1960s and his first mission was shot down, became a jungle prisoner of war and, according to Werner, is the only jungle prisoner of war ever Ever to have escaped. Here is a clip with uh, Christian Bale in the lead role. Nice having met you. What do you mean, Matt? Well, my friends, you can run in here if you like, but I'm gonna scram this very night. This hut, it ain't no prison. <laughs> scram. I like that. I like that. Listen, listen, my friend. Cannot escape. If you try to escape, screw up our release Look, without water you won't survive more than two days out there and without water your tracks will be visible for even more the jungle is the prison and indeed it is and the rest of the movie is about how he escapes from that particular prison now you know at the beginning that he escapes because it's you know that's the thing that everyone knows about Dieter Dengler he was the prisoner who escaped but on the journey there is this extraordinary tale of in inverted commas heroism in which this person through almost through sheer force of will and determinedness gets themselves out of this absolute hellhole and survives at the end now a couple of interesting things about it of course Christian Bell is great Christian Bell is a great performer he is one of those people who does the sort of physical changes enormously I mean you saw the machinist which I keep referring to as the mechanic because I can't say the word machinist, although I just did there, so that sort of proves that to be wrong. Um, and he is somebody who really takes roles on and you know really comes to embody them, and he does a great performance here. More surprising is the fact that Steve Zahn, who is known for things like you know Daddy Daycare and Evil Woman, turns in a great performance as Dwayne, who is his sort of closest compadre in this this breakout they make. And then you heard in that clip there Jeremy Davis doing, of course, a very very convincing impression of um of Charles. Manson because he played unless I'm severely mistaken I think he played Manson in the TV the recent TV movie of Helter Skelter and he seems to still be playing that same well you know man the thing is what can you do man you know it's just like the thing it's that's like what, that's your Woody Allen impression no that's not my Woody Allen impression my Woody Allen went like this you know it's, it's, it's exactly, exactly like, no, the same no, voice no, you see Woody Allen breaking out of the you know you can't get that's the, the jungle same voice. it's like creepy crawlies and like nature it's for me it's a bugs eating okay. the little bugs eating the big bugs stop was that the same voice it was exactly the same. Yeah, it's you. not exactly the same. Have you ever seen Local Hero? Charlie Manson, Woody Allen, it's the same person. OK, How fine. Well, in that, that case, Jeremy Davis playing Woody Allen in a prisoner of war camp in Laos. OK, Thanks. what can I say? There we are, moving swiftly on. Clearly, that's why those guys got the roles and I didn't. That's why I'm sitting here telling you about the virtue of the movie rather than out there playing in the jungle with Werner Herzog, who is, you know, casually getting shot while standing next to me. And incidentally, just to recap on this story once more, I know that every time Werner Herzog tells it, we get more and more cowardly. But I would just like to say if somebody's shooting at you, I think getting out of the way is pretty much a prerequisite. It's nothing to do with being cowardly, it's to do with a sort of survival instinct. It, it's, com- it's common sense. Though we still haven't established whether they, uh, they were in fact aiming at Werner. No, but they did hit Werner, which I think is the empirical evidence is it was Werner who took the bullet in the abdomen. There must be very, and there must be very few, in fact, in the kind of world in which you are mm. and we are. He must be about the only person who could take a bullet in the abdomen and just decide to carry on doing the interview. And it is not a significant bullet. Anyway, back to the film itself. Obviously, the documentary has much more of what Herzog refers to to as ecstatic truth. I mean, this is what Herzog is really interested in, ecstatic truth, moments which reveal the underlying truth of our existence. And you look at films like Grizzly Man, to which this does owe some kind of a debt, or films like Aguirre, Wrath of God, or Fitzcarraldo, or any of those things, they are all about the ecstatic moment when you realise that, that, you know, your place in the cosmos. And, of course, in Herzog's mind, the cosmos does consist of chaos disharmony and murder but it does so in a way which is sort of strangely spiritual now there is much less of that in rescue dawn rescue dawn is in many ways a pretty straightforward action movie i mean it's not an action movie it's a it's it's a tale of heroism in which somebody survives against all the odds in which christian bale really appears to be going through this stuff really doing the stuff that is required to survive and get him out and what's surprising is that considering how mainstream it is it actually is still a herzog movie and i found it a very very satisfying watch it has a dopey ending because at the end it feels the need to celebrate itself in a way which is kind of a little bit top gun and, and, uh, and is not very Werner Herzog and there is a little flight of fancy 
at the end, which I think most people will go, OK, we really could have lived without that. Perhaps that's the sop to say, well, you know, if I'm going to bring in a mainstream audience, they are going to need the cheering ending, which, I mean, obviously the ending is happy in that he lived, but it's not quite as it appears in the film. But there are great performances along the way. He films the jungle like nobody else. He's a really good stripped down director. He understands, and God bless him for this, he understands that there is no worse crime than boring the audience and losing their attention. He doesn't make it into a great big sort of puff candy piece which just has no bearing in reality. It is fairly close to the proper story and hats off to Steve Zahn for giving that real, you know, extraordinary performance. And I would really recommend it. It's a, it's a good, solid film and if it, if it brings Werner Herzog to a wider audience then it has done its job. And what does he think the world is actually about? Chaos, disharmony and murder. Make it sound like drop-ins into computer world by craft <laughs> Yes. Spoken mechanically. <laughs> he said, but he's, he's, he's Bavarian. He said this brilliant thing when they're doing the thing about Grizzly Man. He said at one mo- at one moment this bear he comes very close to me. And I'm turning to Jonathan Ross doing German there. He came very close to me and he walked up to me and I was and I said, well, what did you do? He said, I swore at it in Bavarian. And the bear thought, I'm not having you. That's it. And he, the bear walked away. 